twigs, charcoal, and the death of the Saxon dyke myth. For over a century, British archaeology has repeated the same tale. Offa's dyke and Watts dyke were built by Saxon kings to define borders and display royal power. But each time we peel back another layer, literally and figuratively, the data tells a radically different story. Well, this is no longer about interpretation or fringe theory. The scientific evidence, especially from radiocarbon dating, undermines the Saxon myth. One, the Mesolithic nuts beneath the bank. At Gebauen, Shropshire, archaeologists uncovered pits beneath what's dyke filled with charred hazelnut shells and twigs. Radiocarbon dating placed these at 5,210 to 4,840 BC, deep into the Mesolithic period. This is not background noise. It proves the site was in use and likely managed thousands of years before any so-called Saxon activity. 2. The twigs and the Bronze Age pattern. Here's where things get explosive. Two different digs at Gabawan and Mysey Claude each pulled a charred twig from the primary fill of the dyke's ditch. Both were sent to modern AMS labs for dating. And these were sent to independent AMS labs for testing. Gabon, 2,825 plus or minus 40 years. BP, calibrated to 1120 to 890 BCE. Mize I Claude, 2,855 plus or minus 40 years BP, calibrated to 1120 to 890 BC. Different labs, different sites, nearly identical dates, late Bronze Age. Some might claim residuality or accident, but when the same date keeps showing up in primary contexts at different sites, the odds of pure coincidence plummet. 3. Erdig and Chirk, more prehistoric dates. The new gold standard in the debate is the peer-reviewed Archaeologia Cambrensis study Mali Metal 2021, which returned Erdig Alder Charcoal under the bank, 1414 to 1258 BCE, Bronze Age. Chirk Charcoal at base of bank, 776 to 543 BCE, Iron Age. Uh, these aren't rogue samples, but they are part of a systematic pattern. 4. The Cardike and Wandsdike parallels. Our recent research on Cardike, summarised in my book Cardike, The Lost Waterways of Prehistoric Britain, shows precisely the same pattern. LIDAR analysis, gradient modelling and dated artefacts reveal that this Roman canal sits atop a much older prehistoric water management system, which the Romans later adopted. The exact sequence, prehistoric construction, Roman enhancement and later reuse, emerges at other significant linear earthworks. Wandsdyke, more than just a Saxon bank and ditch, a Roman water system at the summit. A topographic and archaeological evidence shows that a Roman water management system, likely an aqueduct or channel, was constructed along sections of Wandsdyke near Cliff Pipard and Sherhill. The Roman works appear to incorporate the line and gradient of the existing dike, indicating that the dike was already present and subsequently adapted for Roman infrastructure needs. This reuse implies that the dike is pre-Roman in origin, forming, forming part of an older, possibly prehistoric, water management landscape. Rather than constructing a new route, the Romans modified what was already there. Strong evidence that Wandsdyke was not their creation, but an earlier engineering feature they found valuable enough to repurpose. Roman road laid on the dike. To the north of Morgan's Hill, a documented Roman road is physically laid on top of the Wandsdyke bank. The logical sequence? The dike had to exist before the road. For detail and field evidence, see my website for the blog on one psych. The implication, no, 
These features make it impossible to honestly claim that Wandsdyke is purely a Saxon or sub-Roman structure. Instead, we're seeing a prehistoric engineering work, possibly a canal or water management feature repurposed by the Romans and then again in later centuries. A consistent prehistoric pattern. The parallels between Cardike, Wandsdyke, Offersdyke and Wattsdyke are now undeniable. All exhibits show prehistoric dates, Mesolithic, Bronze Age or Iron Age, or structural evidence in primary context. All were reused, enlarged or recut by later societies, be it the Romans, uh, Saxons or Medievals. All have been misunderstood because traditional narratives refuse to follow the evidence. 5. Why the Saxon narrative no longer holds. Traditional archaeology claims that these dikes were built in the Dark Ages because it's what's always been said and because a handful of OSL dates cluster in the early medieval period. However, with numerous radiocarbon dates from secure primary contexts yielding Bronze Age and Iron Age results, the only scientific response is to question the narrative, not the data. This shift isn't limited to a few isolated studies. In 2019, Historic England, formerly English Heritage, published a national overview of linear earthworks, concluding that most of the dikes they had investigated dated to the prehistoric period rather than the early medieval period. Their guidance document, Prehistoric Linear Boundary Earthworks, situates these features firmly in the late Neolithic through to the Iron Age, aligning with the growing body of radiocarbon evidence and undermining the traditional Dark Age attribution. Rather than reinforcing the Saxon story, modern research now supports a much older, more complex landscape. One that was later reused and reinterpreted by both the Romans and the Saxons. 6. AI Modern Method The Death of Peer-Reviewed Dogma for years, peer review has failed to challenge inherited assumptions. Authority was all that mattered at a single dramatic radiocarbon date, like the infamous 6.25 kilograms of charcoal at Maisie Claude could define an entire monument's chronology, regardless of context or contradictory data from other sites. But now, AI is revolutionising how we check and interpret archaeological evidence. Take our recent FB post where we used AI to reassess the Mysie Claude excavation myth. The excavation report's headline date, circa 400 AD from the charcoal, was endlessly repeated as proof of a Roman or sub-Roman dyke. AI's role pulled together site photos, original reports, ditch profiles and stratigraphy from multiple digs. Flag the ditch's V-shape classic recut, and the heavy truncation of the bank over half missing, which undermined the idea that the charcoal was securely sealed and contemporary with construction. Cross-referenced other sites, Goboan, Erdig, Jerk, showing that Bronze Age and Iron Age dates in similar primary contexts kept reappearing, not as random residuals, but as a systematic pattern. Outcome. Instead of unquestioningly accepting published facts, AI enables us to validate or reject past interpretations using all available primary evidence. The Roman story now stands exposed as an artefact of interpretation, not of data. This is not pseudoscience, it's the very definition of the scientific method. Gather all the evidence, challenge every conclusion, rebuild the narrative when the facts demand it. Just as AI is transforming genetics, climate science and engineering, it's now arming archaeology with the ability to see through myths, correct errors and put our past on a solid evidence-based footing. If you want real history, let the data and AI lead the way. Conclusion. Follow the data, not the doctrine. The parallels between Offers Dyke Wattsdyke, Cardyke and Wandsdyke are now undeniable. All show prehistoric 
Mesolithic, Bronze Age or Iron Age, evidence in primary contexts. All were reused, recut or adapted by Romans, Saxons and medieval societies. All have been misunderstood because inherited narratives resisted revision. The story we've been told, that Saxon kings built these monuments as borders, is no longer sustainable. The data demands a paradigm shift. That's it for this week's blog, but be sure to join us next time for another deep dive into Britain's hidden archaeological past. Don't forget to hit subscribe below to be the first to know when our next investigation goes live. Music